I'm Dan. I'm Dan Carlson, one half of Two Cat Men. And I'm John Kadolf, the disembodied half of Two Cat Men. And this is Shutter Club. So uh, we we've been gone for a while. Um, John moved, and uh, it's been a while getting his camera stuff set up and stuff like that. And now the whole world is in lockdown, so that's a delay. Um, Zoom has um, yep. made a, some vague say, statements that they don't want to overrun their um, servers or something, and we certainly don't want to um, contribute to any problems. We'd rather have Zoom dedicated to... Um, people who need to do actual business and people who need it for emergency reasons. So, for the moment, uh, until uh, they they up their um, bandwidth or whatever they got to do, we're uh, getting a little creative. I'm uh, filming from my uh, my my own lockdown position. John is in his. I'm I'm in the fully reclined lockdown position. Yes, I am not quite fully reclined, um, but here we are. Um, both of us watched a 30-minute documentary on uh, Shudder called Cursed Films, The Exorcist. This was the first episode of their new series of Cursed Film uh, documentary episodes. Yeah. So, um, and, and so uh, um, I, I guess I would say that uh, I know an awful lot about this movie already, just because it's... An extremely documented movie. There's been multiple feature-length documentaries about the making. There's been a lot of, you know, talk about everything. So a lot of it didn't come as a surprise to me. Did Did you have any news? Did, 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 um, did you hear anything new in here that you didn't know? I I learned a couple of things about the film, but nothing that had to do with the uh, the the cursed status of it. Right. Um, it, it seemed as though there was the, there was one guy that was being interviewed, and he didn't sound really sure of anything he was saying. <laughs> he was always, you know, he would say something. He'd be like, "I I think that like someone died," and I was like, um, "What so the heck?" Are you talking about somebody commenting on the film or the or the outside story that we're treated to, which is a real life exorcism? Well, okay, so that's a different thing altogether. They were they were talking. He he was commenting on the film itself. And okay, he didn't yeah. sound real sure of himself. Like 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 he didn't actually do a whole lot of research. It's as if he had only heard rumors from like his friends, and why they interviewed him on the camera for it for for that kind of stuff. I I don't understand. Um, um, what, what I learned about the actual film was that the the woman who uh, did the um, it was in the makeup for the uh, the, the masturbation Mer scene. Yeah. She also did several other scenes. Yeah, she um, was hired because she was know. she was hired because she was an adult and she could do those scenes and that they, they wouldn't traumatize Linda Blair. Um, yeah, but who ended uh, up being traumatized? Who ended up being horribly traumatized? The um, something that she's talked about on a couple of things is the scene where she's flipped up and back and forth on the bed by the demon is that illusion was created by like a board or something that was tied to her back and it came loose yeah. so she's actually being thrust forward violently and then backwards onto this bo this straight board and she said it actually I don't did, did it break bones yeah yeah it, they actually it actually fractured her her back and then caused um, issues with her what seat Two, three, and four, or something like that. Like horrible, horrible injury. But I would, yeah, yeah. I, I also, I also learned that um, they had to hire uh, heightened security for her because people on the streets and at school and whatnot yeah. were looking at uh, her. Well, like they, they actually do ask her about that, and, and she doesn't want to answer it. I thought that it was kind of, yeah, I thought it was kind of rude for the, for the, for the, the filmmaker to leave that question in. Um, just because I don't think she was being dodgy by not answering it. I think it's a 
a, a question you might have legitimately good reasons for, for not answering. Right, yeah, and possibly uh, legal possibly le obligation. Right, not to exactly. As well. um, uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, a couple of good things that, I mean, I mean, a couple of interesting things that we learned. Um, we're just, um, well, I don't know if we learned a lot. It was neat to, to hear the interviews from, I think, it, who was the stand -in? Eileen Dietz, who did, the, um, who did the masturbation scene that you talked about and the other scenes. Um, yeah. She hasn't really been interviewed about the movie before, so she kind of um, came on and said a few things. And it was neat to, um, even though the, the premise of this show is that um, it's it's about curse the cursed films. It do, the the good thing that direct the the director did was he kind of t took a skeptic's view of it, and um, you know we have a couple of uh, we have Linda Blair sort of sort of saying you know come on guys. I talked to the um, the 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 person that was doing the uh, advertisement for the movie, and it was her job to kind of drum this stuff up and get people scared. And uh, you know, and there was also yeah. Eileen Dietz who said, you know, if you come at this from you know, I'm paraphrasing, but if you come at this from wanting to see things, I guess you're going to see things that aren't there, kind of. Right, like the fact that when they film the uh, the actual surgical uh, scene, uh, there's that that nurse right. in the background, um, that guy I can't remember his name, but he ended up murdering right. somebody. Uh, well, it was several years. It was a long time afterwards, apparently. Oh, yeah, so it's after. okay, and somehow that gets attributed. Yeah, to which the come film. on, you know, um, the the death yeah, of Max true. von Sydow's brother on the first day of shooting. Okay, to me that's coincidence. And uh, what do you so? Um, what do you make of William Friedkin, who's who's been involved in every documentary about The Exorcist for the last forty years, having nothing to do with this? Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe he's completely just freaking out. I don't know. Maybe he's in a in a in some kind of uh, um. Mental hospital <laughs> or something so. now. Uh, he's, you know, he just did a documentary called The Devil and Father Amorth uh, about a year or two ago where he documented a, a, an actual exorcism. And it was, and I watched, oh, I tried to watch it. I made it about 40 minutes into this and it was just, um, to me, it was incredibly dull. It was all shot with one camera, almost one angle, and there was just a lot of um, writhing and swearing and it was not, you know, and I didn't believe I didn't believe it for a yeah. second, but you know I'm, I'm sure there are people out there who do. I'm not here to poo-poo on anyone who does. I'm just saying personally, I thought it was boring and not not believable. <laughs> which which could very easily lead us into the next part of our discussion of this and uh, the the witnessing of two supposed um, by, by an, by, performed by, on the by an Elmerberg furniture dealer. <laughs> who, who tells who tells the guy that uh, you know after they do their first exorcism that he, they're making progress and he's gonna he's gonna come back next week or something like that. Yeah, he's like I live so I live close by, so I'll just I'll just be stopping yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> the guy like tears his shirt open like the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, and I don't and they, and you know I don't yeah. um I don't deny the possibility that people believe they're possessed. And I don't think that it's necessarily uh, wrong to suggest that um, it, an exorcism might be helpful from a treatment perspective if the person believes they're possessed to put them through sort of a catharsis. But I, I don't think it, I don't think that it has right. any um, actual. Uh, uh, my personal opinion, even though I'm a Christian, I'm not Catholic, is that it doesn't have any real measurable value I don't know right yeah like the, the lady who was being exercised when the when the guy uh, asked her you know um, who, he asked, asked the demon who it was he's like you know what is your name what is your name are you Python are you Legion are you Lucifer and then she's like um, yeah I'm Python well, I thought I thought it's that like they actually like, came out and said that they were uh, Satan almost everybody says that they're possessed by Satan um, Satan must be the busiest demon oh. that's doing any possessions out there because he's always the one. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and the, the, the lady actually said she was. Oh, that I didn't catch, but I only watched it the one time. Um, I did notice. And then she started throwing oh, up yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I, I like, did. Okay. I did think it was interesting that they went into the um, a little bit into um, what was the demons Pazuzu. A little bit, a, a little bit about the demon Pazuzu and and how where how it's based in certain mythologies and um, in the movie we see this gigantic statue in, in in Iraq that's supposed to be Pazuzu, but in I guess in normal um, representations he'd be like a little uh, tiki kind of thing. From what it sounds yeah. like, it, it it didn't affect anything as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned. It didn't affect my appreciation of the film, uh, my appreciation of, of exorcisms, real or fake. Um, I, this, I will say that... 30 oh, minute presentation, this 30 minute presentation really kind of just, I mean, I learned a couple little things about the film and I was entertained by the, uh, um, by the little exorcisms <laughs> yeah. that they tried to Right. show and um, you know uh, I, I, I'll say I'll okay. say one thing about this whole thing with okay. the exorcist is I'm, I'm really happy about the demon's name because every time I hear it I think of uh, it's a wonderful life when he when he's when he's you know when he's back alive again and he's, he's trying to figure out oh yeah my mouth's bleeding my mouth's bleeding oh look the Zuzu's pedal the Zuzu's pedal <laughs> I I um I I remember watching the I saw I've seen this movie dozens of times. I saw it when first when I was like ten years old and it, it really fucked with me the first time I saw it. I think it has that effect the first time you see it. But that you know, I've seen it so many times now it doesn't really affect me. But I still think it works as a drama because by the end I feel really moved when she finally kisses the cross on his neck. Um so I, I still think it's a great movie. Um one of the things that that um <clears throat> I don't know where I was going with that. I just it Pazuzu's pedals. <laughs> <sighs> um I, I I guess uh what they really so uh, this documentary is really for people who might be inclined to believe in a curse. Yeah. And it doesn't um it doesn't really debunk the curse, although it takes enough of a skeptical view of it that it's not... Um, I, I didn't feel like I was watching, you know, like uh, some of the stuff that's on National Geographic now with, how did that pyramid get there? It must have yeah, been aliens. Alien. You know, at least it wasn't with like that. that. With the, right. With the crazy air. Yeah. And I, I just... Um, I, I did find it entertaining. I'm always happy to see members of the cast or the crew talk about right, the movie because yeah. it's just a very interesting production uh, it's nice seeing linda blair on there i think you know the the, the, the thing that really that kind of made me go you know um is, is she said you know i was 12 years old and i uh, what did 12 year old linda blair want i wanted to be a veterinarian yeah but someone called me for the exorcist yep. you know so she's lived with you know we don't think about you know we, th we think about, oh, that's a great movie, or William Friedkin is a great director. We don't think about the effect that it might have had on someone who is just was just doing a role and probably didn't think much of it, and then later on had to live with this as part of her legacy, yeah. um, for better well, or worse. Well, I mean, she really didn't do a whole lot other than that. And, no, and then, well, well, that's a great performance. Oh, she's been in a few things. I liked her in Roller Boogie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Repossessed, which is a comedy, kind of the of the Exorcist. Um, I like the fact that uh, that she works with animals now. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I I would recommend this uh, to horror fans. It's fast and it's 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 fast and to the point. Um, it's interesting. I'm very interested in where the series goes from here because two of the other movies they're going to talk about are ones that I'm very interested in. Um, not because I think they were cursed, but because they've they've had very little um, conversation around them uh, in, in terms of documentaries, and that that's Poltergeist and Twilight Zone. The oh movie. yeah, yeah, I, I um, I'm looking so. forward to those as well. Um, uh, well, you know, if if 
if I ever get, to, if I ever become possessed, I, I, I don't want you to ex- have the, ex- the demon exercised right away. Um, I want you to, I want you, to, I want you to like fuck with the demon for a while, um, and try to get him to play a, a few board games with you. Because if if I'm in there still, you know, I'm probably going to be fairly bored and maybe slightly terrified. So if if, if you know get them to roll some dice and, and, you know, play like shoots and ladders or, you know, yeah, D and D would be great. You know, that'd be, I'd love to see how a demon plays D and D. I mean, you know, from the inside anyway, I'd like to see it. Um, right. Exactly. I, I want to be a writer in this whole, in the whole situation. You know, I just want to, I want you to take the demon to the zoo um, I would like you to, you know, take the demon to, um, a movie, um, but a Disney film. Just say, you know, I'm not going to become possessed until at least after all of this blows over. And then, and then after that, we'll see what happens. But, um, but definitely, um, a, a Disney movie, um, the zoo, board game. And then, um, and then take me to a club. Um, yeah, and then if, if everything goes well doing those things, then you don't even really necessarily have to do the exorcism. You can just, like, maybe see if you can get visitation rights for me. You know, I could see, I could see us sitting at McDonald's, you know, having uh, a couple of ice cream cones, you know, and then, and then, like, my head, like, turns halfway around towards you. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, if I'm facing away and then all of a sudden, like, a cut starts showing up, like, going across my face, and you're like, dude, dude, no, no, no. <laughs> and then it just closes back up and, and the eyes turn back to normal. 